Hello everyone. In this particular video, I'm going to cover the revision of chapter number two, that is residential status and scope of total income. So there are two parts in chapter number two. Part one is residential status and part two is scope of total income. First, we will start with part number one, that is residential status. So we'll see the residential status of various RCCs. So first we will start with the residential status of an individual. So to determine the residential status of an individual, there are two things. One is basic condition. Second is additional condition. In case of basic condition, if you satisfy any one basic condition, then you will be called as a resident person. You will be called as a resident person for a taxation purpose, any one basic condition. But if you do not satisfy any basic condition, then you will be called as a non-resident person. Now, sir, what are these basic conditions and how many basic conditions are there? So there are two basic conditions. Basic condition number one, in the previous year, I'm staying in India for equal to or more than 182 days. In the previous year, I'm staying in India for 182 days or more. Or this is the first basic condition. Or in the previous year, I'm staying in India for 60 days or more. In the previous year, I'm staying in India for 60 days or more and 365 days or more during four years preceding the previous year. So basically, in basic condition number two, there are two subconditions. One in the previous year, 60 days or more and four years preceding the previous year, which means this year is the fifth year. So four years pehle, I should be staying in India for equal to or more than 365 days. So basically, if you satisfy any one of the basic conditions, you will be called as a resident person. But otherwise, if you do not satisfy any basic condition, then you will be called as a non-resident person. Perfect. But in certain cases, in certain cases, in certain exceptions, second basic condition, the second basic condition will not be applicable. In certain cases and in certain exceptions, the second basic condition will not be applicable. So, sir, ye konse konse cases hai? To case number one, there are three cases in all. Just may second basic condition is not applicable at all. Only first basic condition is applicable. So, <coughs> first category hai, you are an Indian citizen. You are leaving India for employment. You are an Indian citizen. You are leaving India for employment. In that case, you are category one and you are falling under that exception for that you are not required to fulfill the second basic condition, which means only you'll have to check the first basic condition of 182 days. This is your category one. Your second category is you are an Indian citizen who is leaving India for as a member of crew of Indian ship. Indian ship ka crew member you are a crew member of Indian ship and you are an Indian citizen and you are leaving India. In that case, you will fall under the second category of information wherein the second basic condition is not at all applicable. You have to check only one basic condition of 182 days. The third category is if you are a foreign citizen, which means if you are a foreign citizen and you, if you are a person of Indian origin, you are a foreign citizen, you are a person of Indian origin. You are coming to India for a visit. So, sir, what is the meaning of person of Indian origin? Person of Indian origin matlab I could individual parents, my parents, my grandparents were born in undivided India. Were born in undivided India. And they such person, you're a foreign citizen, you're a, and you are a person of Indian origin who is coming to India for a visit and not for professional reasons. Please understand this not for professional reasons, only for visit. And then in that case, you will fall under the third category. There is one more thing here. Here we have said a foreign citizen. It is also applicable to Indian citizen. So the third category is if you are an Indian citizen or if you're not an Indian citizen, you're a foreign citizen, but you are a person of Indian origin who is coming to India for visit, then in that case, you will be fall you'll fall under the third category of persons wherein you are not required to fulfill the second basic condition but recently 
government came up with an amendment with this part of the category government came up with an amendment with this part of the category third part and they said ki roko third part ke liye second basic condition apply ho sakta hai with some amendments kabhi hoga aise you are falling under the third category yes you are an indian citizen or you are a foreign citizen but who is of person of indian origin coming to india for a visit then we will first check tera total income kitna hai you what is your total income which is excluding the income of foreign source that is foreign source income chhod ke that is indian income tera kitna hai wo dekhenge we'll check whether the total income is more than 15 lakhs more than 15 15 lakhs if yes your income is more than 15 lakhs then your second basic condition will be applicable but second basic condition kya tha 60 in the previous year and 365 in four up four preceding previous years wo jo 60 tha na 60 wo replace hoke 120 ho jayega baki all the conditions will remain the same baki all the conditions will remain the same i will repeat if you are falling under the third category you will first check the income of this person whether total income excluding foreign sourced income is more than 15 lakhs or no to aapko samjha it is more than 15 lakhs if it is more than 15 lakhs then you will see <coughs> you will also see the second basic condition but with some alteration jo 60 days hai wo 60 days ke jagah pe 120 days replace hoga baki everything will remain the same and if you are fulfilling the 120 days ka condition you will be considered as resident or wo resident seedha r n o r ban jayega R N O R that is resident but not ordinarily resident. Perfect. Okay. Now I will repeat the entire thing in one minute. If you are falling under the exceptions, second basic condition is not applicable. But three categories. Category number one, you are an Indian citizen who is leaving India for two person purposes. First is for an employment. Second, as a member of crew of Indian ship. Two categories over. Third category me, you are an Indian citizen. or you are a person of indian origin who is coming to india for visit then in that case second basic condition is not applicable but after the amendment they said ki ruko ruko you first check the total income of that person whether total income is more than 15 lakhs yes then the second basic condition will be revived with some alteration the second basic condition kya tha 60 days in the previous year 365 days in four years preceding the previous year which is 60 days here that will be replaced with 120 days and if you satisfy this then you will become resident but which resident directly resident but not ordinarily resident i hope you got the entire thing so again i will go up and check ki hum log ka baki kya hai basic condition ka entire part is done then we will move on with the additional condition when do we come to additional condition when do we come to additional condition in the basic condition if the answer is resident if you are a resident then only i will come to additional condition if you are a non resident no further checks are required but if you are a resident further checks are required whether you are ror that is ordinary resident or you are rnor that is not ordinary resident to check that whether you are ror or rnor we'll have to check the additional condition now now if you satisfy zero additional conditions if you do not satisfy any additional condition then you will be called as ror and if you satisfy any one additional condition you will be called as rnor now we will see what are the additional conditions which are mentioned stay off 729 days or less in india during seven previous years preceding the previous year matlab this is the eighth year this is the eighth year aur piche ke 7 saal mein i should be staying in india for 729 days or less this is your first basic first additional condition second additional condition is you should be a non resident for 9 out of 10 preceding previous years For nine out of ten preceding previous years, मतलब this is the eleventh year. ये साल छोड़ के पीछे के दस साल में I should be a non-resident for nine out of ten previous years. 
which means for nine out of 10 previous years, I should not be fulfilling any of the basic conditions. Then only I will be called as non-resident and I should follow that status for nine out of 10 years. Then I will be uh, called as fulfilling the second additional condition. First, stay of 729 days or less in the seven years preceding the previous year or non-resident. You are non-resident for nine out of 10 previous years, immediately preceding the previous year. In that case, you will be called as R and O R if you satisfy anyone. If you satisfy none, then R O R will But this is the amendment that these two additional conditions have been added with other two additional conditions. The first additional condition, if you remember, we have done it in two minutes ago, that in exception, if you are falling under category number three. Category number three, you will see your total income whether you are whether you have a total income of more than 15 lakhs or not. If it is 15 lakhs, ke upar hai, then we will see that your total period of stay is 120 days. Ke upar ja rahe because we have seen that the period of, uh, the second basic condition will revive 120 days. Wala. If you satisfy that condition, you will become a resident. But which resident? Sidha, directly R L O R. Directly R N O R. Ye tha third point. And fourth point is you will be called as deemed resident. You are called as deemed resident under 61A. You will be called as deemed resident as per section 61A. In that case, you will directly become a R N O R. So, sir, what is the meaning of deemed resident? Deemed resident ke liye we had discussed about high net worth individuals ye tax planning karte the. High net worth individuals jo tax planning karte the, unhone unke liye ye deemed resident ka concept laya aur unhone bola ki there are three conditions. Ek, you are an Indian citizen. Have they mentioned anything about person of Indian origin? No, you are an Indian citizen. Having total income other than foreign source income. First, Indian citizen. Hai then your total income other than foreign source income is exceeding 15 lakh rupees. This is your second point. Indian citizen, total income is more than 15 lakh rupees and you do not pay any tax in any other countries. Not liable to pay tax in any other country or territory by the reason of his domicile or residence. So three conditions will have to satisfy. One is you are, you are an Indian citizen. Your total income excluding foreign sourced income is more than 15 lakhs and you do not pay tax in any of the countries. If you satisfy these conditions, then you will be called as a resident, which means as per the definition, you are not a resident, but the income tax department will treat you like a resident. But to which resident, sir, you will be considered as RNOR directly. You will be considered as RNOR directly. Perfect. Great. Then one more point uh, which we will have to discuss. Rule number 126 of income tax rules, wherein they have mentioned there are uh, very much in there is very much inconvenience in determining the total number of days of stay in India in case of a member of crew of Indian ship. Point number two, member of crew of Indian ship is cut total number of days. There is a lot of inconvenience. So that's why they came up with this rule 126 and they say, you know, the entry date in the ship of that person as per the continuous discharge certificate, take the entry date, take the exit date, take the entry date, take the exit date. This period of days, hai, you will exclude those period of days from 365 days. You will exclude those period of days from 365 days. Perfect. So total number of days in the previous year, for example, it is 365. You are staying in India. Entry day, have 1st of Jan. Exit day is 31st of Jan. So can I say 31 days he was out of India? Yes, then 31 days he was out of India. So Jan May he came back on 31st of Jan. And again, from 3rd February, he went to US for five days. So again, for five days, he is not in India. And again, I will reduce five days. So my total number of days will be 365 minus 31 minus five. So wo mujhe kya milega? number of days of stay in India. It can be 365 or 366 as the case may be. Jo leap here, hai, leap here, hai, you'll have to consider that also. So don't make mistakes in that particular thing. If it is a leap year, it will be 360 days. I hope I'm clear with all the provisions of a residential status of an individual 
then we will move on with the residential status of HUF. In the residential status of HUF, you will have to see the management and control. Whether the management and control is wholly or partly located in India, if answer is yes, then you are a resident. If it is wholly outside India, percent in India, mein hai, then you are a non-resident. Wholly or partly in India, hai, you are a resident. Wholly outside India, malo, India ka to kuch bhi hai. in that case, you are a non-resident. But they said, HUF ke liye, resident, non-resident is not sufficient. Resident ke liye further bifurcation is required, whether you are ROR or RNR. So, what HUF ke liye se to unho ne bula, we'll have to see the residential status of Karta. Whether Karta is ROR, then HUF is also ROR. Whether Karta is RNOR, then HUF will also be RNOR. Perfect. It will depend upon the management and control of HUF. Then I will move on with the next concept of residential status of company. The residential status of company will be dependent upon the place of effective management. Residential status of a company will be dependent upon place of effective management. We will see that now. Company can be of two types. One is foreign company. Second is Indian company. Indian company and foreign company. In case of Indian company, in case of Indian company, Place of effective management India mein hai ya India mein nahi hai does not matter. Indian company is going to be resident. Place of effective management will not matter. Where is the effective management? Management kidar se ho hai? That is the meaning of place of effective management. <coughs> Decisions kidar se ja hai? Management kidar se control ho hai? place of effective management definition may cover so Indian company as far as Indian company is concerned place of effective management is of no relevance Indian company is going to be resident in India if poem is in India then Indian company is resident even though poem is wholly outside India it is called poem place of effective management if the poem is wholly outside India it will still be considered as resident so Indian company there is no brainer Poem India mein hai, nahi hai, does not matter, resident company ho jayega. But in case of foreign company, we'll have to see the poem. If the poem is in India, then resident. Poem is outside India, you are a non-resident. I hope everything is crystal clear. Now, in case of residential status of firm AOP and POI, it is very much similar to HUF. What is that? If the management and control is wholly or partly in India, then you are a resident. If the management and control is wholly outside India, India ka kuch bhi nahi, in that case you are a non-resident, but here further bifurcation of resident is not required. Only resident, non-resident is sufficient. So this was all about your residential status of various assessments. Now we will start with part B, that is scope of total income. In scope of total income, I can say that income can be divided into two parts. One is Indian income and second is foreign income. Indian income and foreign income. Now, in case of Indian income, sir, what do you, when do you call this is an Indian income? What is the meaning of Indian income? So, Indian income means if it is accrued in India, if it is accrued in India or, or it is received in India. Accrued in India, out, received outside India hoga to. Accrued matlab ke generate India mein hua income ho. Accrued in India, par received outside India hua to chalega. Because it is accrued in India, to Indian income ho jayega. To sir, dousri case mein, if it is accrued outside India, par received in India hoga to. Par accrued outside India hua hai. To, receive, to government will say receive hua na in India mein, you will have to pay tax because it is an Indian income. To accrued mein bhi, there are two further bifurcations. One is actual accrual, malab, accru hua hai as per the definition. Or there can be a deemed accrual, matlab, deemed to be accrued. Deemed to be accrued, matlab, it is actually not accrued, but for income tax purpose, department will assume that it is accrued and it will be treated as if it is accrued in India. Similarly, in case of received, received in India actually mujhe paisa mil sakta hai. Or they will treat it as, as if I have received the amount, which is the meaning of deemed to be received in India. So if it is accrued in India, deemed to be accrued in India, received in India, or deemed to be received in India, 
if you are falling under any of the four categories you will be it that income will be called as an indian income but if you are not falling under accrued in india deemed to be accrued in india or received in india or deemed to be received in india then you will be that income will be considered as foreign income so sir what is the consequence of this indian income foreign income to unhone bola hai see types of incomes indian income foreign income now indian income agar aapka hoga matlab kya accrued in india deemed to be accrued in india received in india or deemed to be received in india agar aapka indian income hai to wo ror hone do rnor hone do ya non resident hone do irrespective of the status it will be taxable q because wo india se generate hua hai to ror hai rnor hai nr hai does not matter for indian government indian government is saying to india ka income india se income kama raha hai na khel khatam you will have to pay tax in india because it is an indian income rnor ror nr does not matter it is taxable so indian income ke liye there is no brainer but in the case of foreign income but in the case of foreign income you will have to bifurcate ki agar ror hai foreign income ror kama raha hai to ror ke liye it is taxable why because ror ke liye wo indian income hone do ya foreign income hone do both the types of incomes for ror it is taxable because for ror his global income will be taxable his global income will be taxable there is no bifurcation ror ke liye se ho hi nahi sakta ki so this particular income is not taxable foreign income hone do indian income hone do taxable but this is not the case in case of rnor foreign income ror ke liye hamesha tax foreign income rnor ke liye hamesha tax nahi hoga मतलब फॉर आर एन आर देर आर सर्टन इनकम्स विच आर फॉरन इनकम विच आर टैक्सीबल फॉर आर एन आर बट सर्टन इनकम विच आर नॉट टैक्सीबल तो सर वॉट इज दिस फॉरन इनकम होगा फॉर आर एन आर ओनली टू टाइप्स ऑफ फॉरन इनकम्स आर टैक्सीबल फॉर आर एन आर ओनली टू टाइप्स ऑफ फॉरन इनकम आर टैक्सीबल फॉर आर एन आर बाकी एवरीथिंग इज नॉट टैक्सीबल बाकी एवरी एवरी एवरीथिंग इज नॉट टैक्सीबल बट सिर्फ दो चीजें टैक्सीबल होंगी एंड दैट इनकम शुड बी आर फॉरन इनकम तो सर ये कौन से फॉरेन इनकम है जो आर एन ओर को जिसपे आर एन ओर को टैक्स भरना पड़ेगा तो फर्स्ट वन इज बिजनेस इज आउटसाइड इंडिया इट इज अक्रूड आउटसाइड इंडिया इट इज रिसीव आउटसाइड इंडिया दैट्स वाई इट इज अ फॉरन इनकम अक्रूड आउटसाइड इंडिया रिसीव आउटसाइड इंडिया दैट्स वाई इट इज अ फॉरन इनकम बट सच बिजनेस इज कंट्रोल्ड फ्रॉम इंडिया बट सच बिजनेस इज कंट्रोल्ड फ्रॉम इंडिया that's why whatever income that business is earning which is outside india that income on that income rr will have to pay tax in india is it accruing in india no is it received in india no what is the thing which is connected to india that is control india se wo business control ho raha hai because of that whatever income that outside india business is earning that will have to pay tax in india at rnor will have to pay tax in india so business is controlled from india or profession is set up in india these two these two types of foreign incomes will be taxable for rnor but any other type of foreign income will not be taxable for rnor no for other foreign incomes will be taxable only these two foreign incomes will be taxable perfect now ye ror ka hua foreign income ka ror ke liye it is always taxable आर एन ओ आर के लिए ओनली टू फॉरन इनकम्स आर टैक्सीबल एक्सेप्ट फॉर दैट एवरीथिंग विल बी नॉट टैक्सीबल बट फॉर नॉन रेसिडेंट फॉरन इनकम है नॉन रेसिडेंट को मिल रहा है इज देर एनी कनेक्शन विद इंडिया फॉरन इनकम है नॉन रेसिडेंट है तो दे आर सेट की इट इज नॉट टैक्सीबल फॉर दैट फॉर नॉन रेसिडेंट टू पे टैक्स इन इंडिया बेसिकली फॉरन इनकम कम है नॉन रेसिडेंट ने इंडिया में एक भी रुपये टैक्स नहीं बनेगा even though that con- that business is set up outside india accrued out income is accrued outside india income is received outside india and even though that business is controlled from india if you are a non resident you are not required to pay any tax in india unlike rnor rnor mein kya ho raha tha agar aapka accrual outside india hai received outside india hai but wo business india se control hota hai to wo jo business hai uska income rnor ko idhar tax lagega he'll have to pay tax in india 
but for a non resident even though 100% of the control is in india for that foreign sourced business it is accrued outside india received outside india even though the control of that business is entirely in india still for a non resident it is not taxable i hope you are clear with the entire scenario of types of foreign income and taxability of such types of incomes and taxability of such incomes indian income no brainer always taxable ror rnor nr foreign income ror hai hamesha taxable dekhne ka hi nahi rnor hai only two foreign sourced incomes are taxable baki everything is not taxable non resident hai dekho hi mat everything is not taxable even though it is controlled from india even though it is set up in india even though it is 100% controlled in india i hope i'm very clear with the types of incomes and their taxability to various types of resident and non resident perfect now we will come to receipt of income deemed to be receipt of income accrual of income and deemed to be accrual of income now receipt of income what is the meaning of receipt actually i am receiving the income that is income received in india income received in india matlab kya received in the first occasion if its income is received in the first occasion then only it will be considered as it is received in india see the first point receipt the first occasion the first time when the recipient gets money under his control for example my brother is working in google us in google us he is earning income from google us he is receiving that income in usa but after receiving the income that my brother is remitting the money to india have I, i have received the money in india yes but for income tax purpose they have said ki first time receive kidhar hua tha first time receive hua tha mere brother ko outside india that is in the us uske baad he just remitted the money so mere remittance does not mean mere remittance does not mean i have received that money in india the first incidence is important this is your income received in india income deemed to be received in india there are five parts first is employer contribution to the extent of extent of 12% rahega no tax no income but over and about 12% of salary hoga that is employer's contribution then you will have to pay tax because that will be considered as indian income employer's contribution to recognize the provident fund in, in employers contribution to whom recognized non unrecognized it is in recognized provident fund in excess of 12% in excess of 12% 12% hoga to no income because it is exempt 12% of salary hoga to it is exempt first is employers contribution to rpf in excess of 12% of salary second interest credited to what rpf of the employee in excess of 9.5% per annum first employer's contribution 12% interest credited to rpf 9.5% if there is any amount under urpf that is unrecognized provident fund and if you are transferring that money to recognized provident fund then in that case also it is deemed to be received in india <clears throat> fourth point contribution made by central government or other employer under the pension scheme under section 80 ccd to the account of the pay कंट्रीब्यूशन किसने किया सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट और अदर एम्प्लॉय किधर किया जो एटीसीसीडी में स्कीम्स दिया ना उसमें कंट्रीब्यूशन किया देन इट इज डीम्ड टू बी रिसीव्ड इन इंडिया एंड द फिफ्थ पॉइंट इज एनी टैक्स डिडक्टेड एट सोर्स सो फाइव पॉइंट्स एम्प्लॉयर्स कंट्रीब्यूशन टू आरपीएफ इन एक्सेस ऑफ 12% इंटरेस्ट क्रेडिटेड टू आरपीएफ इन एक्सेस ऑफ 9.5% अमाउंट क्रेडिटेड फ्रॉम यूआरपीएफ टू आरपीएफ इट इज डीम्ड टू बी रिसीव्ड इन इंडिया फोर्थ कंट्रीब्यूशन मेड बाय गवर्नमेंट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट और अदर एम्प्लॉयर in which in what in pension schemes which are mentioned under atccd and any tds any tax deducted at source will be considered as income deemed to be received in india so receipt of income in two parts we covered one is income received in india and second part we covered income deemed to be received in india then we will move on to the next point that is accrual of income what is the meaning of accrual of income accrual matlab kya accrue means the right to receive the income in the in this we have seen that what is the difference between accrual and due income is accrued matlab kya and income is due matlab kya in the month of for example the month of february you are working every day you are working every day the salary of february is accruing every day 
बट इट इज ड्यू ऑन द नेक्स्ट मंथ का फर्स्ट डे सैलरी इज अक्रूइंग एवरी डे बट इट इज ड्यू ऑन द नेक्स्ट मंथ का फर्स्ट डे दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ड्यू एंड अक्रूवल अक्रूवल एवरी डे अक्रूव होता है एंड ड्यू वो अक्रूवल का ड्यू डेट होता है दैट इज वन डे दैट इज नेक्स्ट मंथ का फर्स्ट डे दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ड्यू एंड अक्रूवल this is the accrual of income then we will move on with the main topic heart of this chapter that is deemed a uh, income deemed to accrue or arise in india that is given under section 9 income deemed to accrue or arise in india my first point is income of a non resident from a business connection in india that person has a business connection i'm talking from non resident perspective non resident has a business connection in india business connection mane uska branch office ho sakta hai uska agent ho sakta hai that that means he has a business in india to agent ne kaun se kaun se set condition satisfy karne chahiye to unhone isme bola hai that agent must have the authority to conclude the contract he should be you she should have the authority to conclude the contract point number 1 he habitually maintains stock of goods maintains stock of goods फर्स्ट कंक्लूड कर सकता है कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सेकंड मेंटेन्स द स्टॉक ऑफ गुड्स एंड वेयर वेरी हैबिचुअली सिक्योर्स ऑर्डर्स इन इंडिया फॉर नॉन रेसिडेंट वेरी हैबिचुअली सिक्योर्स ऑर्डर्स इन इंडिया फॉर नॉन रेसिडेंट इन दैट केस इन दैट केस ही विल बी कंसीडर्ड एज एन एजेंट आई हैव गिवन वन एग्जांपल हियर दैट गूगल इंक इज अ कंपनी इन यूएसए गूगल इंक हैज अ ब्रांच ऑफिस इन इंडिया and from that branch office he is earning it is earning 10 lakh rupees google inc is earning 10 lakh rupees from branch office in india but google inc has another business in uk also and google inc has another business in canada also so google inc ka total income kitna hai 10 lakh india se aaya 40 lakh uk se aaya canada se 60 lakh se aaya to hum log ne dekha if the non resident has a business connection in india that person that non resident will have to pay tax in india तो सर ये टैक्स कौन से अमाउंट पे लगेगा व्हाट विल बी द इनकम विल इट बी 10 लाख प्लस 40 लाख प्लस 60 लाख तो आंसर इज नो इंडिया इज कंसर्न्ड ओनली अबाउट द इनकम व्हिच इज गेटिंग जनरेटेड फ्रॉम इंडिया सो दे विल चार्ज दे कैन चार्ज टैक्स ओनली ऑन 10 लाख रुपीस एंड दे कैन नॉट चार्ज टैक्स ऑन 40 लाख एंड 60 लाख इज इट अक्रूड इन इंडिया नो इज इट रिसीव्ड इन इंडिया नो इज देयर एनी कनेक्शन ऑफ 40 एंड 60 लाख इन इंडिया नो सिर्फ कनेक्शन अपना ब्रांच ऑफिस का है तो इनकम विच इज एट्रीब्यूटेबल टू सच बिजनेस कनेक्शन ओनली दैट मच इनकम विल बी टैक्सेबल इन इंडिया इन द हैंड्स ऑफ व्हाट इन द हैंड्स ऑफ होम इन द हैंड्स ऑफ गूगल इंक ओनली टेन लाख रुपीस पे गूगल इंक विल हैव टू पे टैक्स इन इंडिया परफेक्ट देन वी सॉ सम कॉमन कंसेप्ट ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट एजेंट If you are an independent agent, मतलब क्या? Independent agent मतलब there is one agent in India, but that person, that agent is not working exclusively for that non-resident. He is not working exclusively for that non-resident. He secures orders from multiple vendors who are non-residents, which means this is his business to work as an agency. Is he working independent? Uh, uh, is he working only for that non-resident? No. which means he is an independent agent and if he is an independent agent if he secures orders for all the other non resident not only him then in that case that independent agent will not be considered as a business connection because he is an independent agent correct this is your point number 5 point number 6 is that only that only the income which is attributable to that business connection only that much income will be taxed in india for google inc परफेक्ट बट उन्होंने बोला है दैट फॉलोइंग शैल नॉट बी ट्रीटेड एज बिजनेस कनेक्शन इन इंडिया उसके लिए आई हैव अ मेमोनिक सीडी पेन सीडी पेन व्हाट इज सी शूटिंग अ सिनेमेटोग्राफ फिल्म्स इन इंडिया बाय नॉन रेसिडेंट नॉन रेसिडेंट इज कमिंग इनटू इंडिया एंड शूटिंग अ सिनेमेटोग्राफ फिल्म्स इन दैट केस ही इज नॉट कंसीडर्ड एज हैविंग अ बिजनेस कनेक्शन इन इंडिया बट देयर आर सर्टेन कंडीशंस व्हिच आर गिवन the person who is coming into india if he is a, if he is if he is an individual he should not be a res- he should not be a citizen of india if that assessee the non resident is a firm then in that case no partner should be the indian citizen of india or who is a resident of india or if that non resident is a company then no shareholder is a citizen of india or a resident of india if these three conditions are satisfied then only shooting of cinematography films in india by non resident 
will not form a business connection. Point number one, D is what display of rough diamonds in special notified zone by foreign company. That is also not considered as having a business connection in India. So C is done, that is cinematograph films. D is rough diamonds. Then pen, P is what? P is business whose all operations are not carried out in India. Matlab, only proportionate, P is what? Only proportionate income, which is attributable to Indian operations will be considered as income for that non-resident person. This is your E is what purchase of goods in India for export by non-resident for export by non-resident. What is he doing? Purchase of goods in India. That's it. Non-resident wants to export that. That's why he is purchasing certain goods from India. That is the only thing which is, which is doing only for the export purpose. If he's doing that, then whatever income he will generate from India, it will not be taxable in India. And there will be no business connection in India. This is your E and N will be collection of news and views in India for transmission out of India. People are coming, CN, um, uh, BBC news are coming here, shooting something and they're transmitting the news outside India. This will not be considered as having a business connection in India. This is your first point on business connection, which is your what? Don't forget, what are we doing? We're doing income deemed to be accrued in India. The first point is business connection. Second point, if you have a property or asset or a source of income in India, in this example, I in class mein diya tha. there are two cases. If you, are a house, if you have a house property in India and if you are giving that house property on rent, so you will receive the rent. Then in that case, if the non-resident having a house property in India and if that house property is giving or given on rent and if the non-resident is receiving rent, then whatever rent is receiving, even though he's receiving that rent outside India, still it will be considered as that income is deemed to be accrued in India because the asset is situated in India. That asset can be your house property or that asset can be your fixed deposit. Non-resident is coming into India, is going in Kotak Bank, is opening a fixed deposit. Fixed deposit open karne ka, uska interest generate hoga. So wo jo interest generate hoa, even though it is received outside India in his bank account outside India, but still, whatever income he's generating from the fixed deposit, that is asset, which is located in India, in that case, that income will be considered as income deemed to be accrued in India. This is your second point. Third point is capital gain. That non-resident has a property in India. And if that non-resident is selling this property, he will have to consider capital gains. So, jo capital gains arise honge, both your capital gains only that will be deemed to be accrued in India. Why? Because the capital asset that is the building or house property is situated in India. I hope everybody is clear with all the three top three points of your income deemed to be accrued in India. Next point is salary income. Salary income usually what happens is it is deemed to accrue at a place where the services are rendered. Jitha service render hota hai, udar sir salary income accrue hota hai. But in case of government of India, if the government of India is giving the salary to whom? To Indian citizen outside India. There is an Indian citizen and who is going abroad to work on behalf of government of India. So government of India will give salary to such Indian citizen who is who has gone outside India. Yes. But if they have salary, diya, to it will be taxable. But if the government of India has perquisites diye or allowances, diye, to it will be totally and totally exempt under tax. उन्होंने और एक नीचे एग्जांपल दिया था अगर पेंशन का पेमेंट किया पेंशन पेंशन का भी मिलता है आफ्टर रिटायरमेंट पेंशन का पेमेंट किया गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ने आउटसाइड इंडिया टू हुम टू इट्स ऑफिशियल्स एंड जजेस हु आर एक्चुअली परमानेंटली रिसाइडिंग आउटसाइड इंडिया परमानेंटली रिसाइडिंग आउटसाइड इंडिया तो इनको हम टैक्सेबल नहीं करेंगे इसको हम डीम्ड टू अक्रू इन इंडिया नहीं मानेंगे इसीलिए इस पे टैक्स नहीं होगा पेंशन का पेमेंट किया बाय द गवर्नमेंट to officials or judges who are permanently residing outside India. So, Mota Muti, government ne agar Indian citizen outside India ko salary payment kiya, it is taxable. Allowances, perquisites payable kiya, it is exempt. Or agar pension ka payment kiya to officials and judges who are permanently residing outside India, then it is case they are deemed, they, it is not deemed to accrue or arise in India. Perfect. The last, thoda complex part, that is interest, royalty and FTS. It is deemed to accrue in India in the following cases and taxable to everyone. For that, I have one diagram. So 
So in this, basically, what is happening? In this, the government of India is paying interest, royalty, and fees for technical services to a non-resident. Basically, interest government pay कर रहा है मतलब क्या? Interest government pay कर रहा है मतलब government must have taken the loan from non-resident. That's why government is paying interest. Yes. So the non-resident has provided the loan or your know-how, that is technology or technical service. Non-resident ने government को provide किया. इसीलिए government is paying interest on that loan. Royalty for that know-how and fees for technical services. So government, if it pay karta hoga non-resident ko, so please remember it is always and always taxable. It is always and always taxable. Second point, this is your first point. Second point, resident is making a payment to non-resident. What interest, royalty, and FTS? We'll understand this with the help of this example. There is one resident here and there is one non-resident here. नॉन रेजिडेंट इज प्रोवाइडिंग वॉट लोन दे रहा है नो हाउ दे रहा है और टेक्निकल सर्विस दे रहा है टू अ रेजिडेंट पर्सन नाउ कैन आई से फॉर टेकिंग द सर्विसेस ऑफ नो हाउ और टेक्निकल सर्विस और टेकिंग अ लोन रेजिडेंट विल पे विल हैव टू पे सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ मनी टू नॉन रेजिडेंट ओके वॉट इज दैट लोन के अगेंस्ट इंटरेस्ट होगा नो हाउ के अगेंस्ट रॉयल्टी होगा एंड टेक्निकल सर्विस के अगेंस्ट फीस फॉर टेक्निकल सर्विस होगा तो कैन आई से दीज थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ इनकम विच विल बी टैक्सेबल इन देंड्स ऑफ नॉन रेसिडेंट विच इज इनकम इन देंड्स ऑफ नॉन रेसिडेंट आंसर इज दिस सो वेदर दैट इंटरेस्ट रॉयल्टी एंड एफ टी एस फॉर दिस नॉन रेसिडेंट टैक्सेबल है या नहीं है ये किस पर डिपेंडेंट होगा यूटिलाइजेशन विच इज डन बाय द नॉन रेसिडेंट यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ लोन नो हाउ एंड टेक्निकल सर्विस ये रेसिडेंट कैसे यूटिलाइज कर रहा है इस पर डिपेंडेंट होगा the loan know how and technical services which are provided by non resident to resident if he has utilized it in india agar wo india mein utilize kar raha hai to interest hai royalty hai ya fts hai wo ye non resident ke liye taxable hoga basically income of a non resident whether it will be taxable or not it will be dependent upon the utilization done by the resident Utilization done by the resident. अगर वो resident बंदा इंडिया में ही use कर रहा है तो वो जो non resident को interest royalty FTS मिल रहा है that will be entirely taxable. But जो loan know how and technical service मिल रहा है resident को and if that resident is using that is utilizing that loan know how and technical service outside India for business and profession. For business and profession outside India, तो government is saying इधर का कुछ भी संबंध नहीं है. That's why for that non-resident, जो resident payment करेगा interest का, royalty and FTS का, it will not be taxable. For whom? For this non-resident. Because the resident is utilizing that loan, know-how and technical service outside India for business purpose. But अगर वो ही resident पर बंदा utilize कर रहा है वो loan, know-how and technical service outside india but not for business and profession but for other purpose then in that case interest ka jo payment hoga royalty ka payment hoga or fts ka payment hoga and that payment will be the income for non resident for non resident will it be taxable answer is yes because resident is utilizing that money outside india but for other than business and profession purpose that's why it will be taxable mota moti अगर रेसिडेंट यूटिलाइज कर रहा है इंडिया में तो इंडिया है आ गया बीच में इंडिया बीच में आया तो नॉन रेसिडेंट को जो इंटरेस्ट रॉयल्टी एंड एफटीएस मिलेगा वो टैक्सेबल होगा बट अगर इंडिया बीच में नहीं आ रहा है मतलब रेसिडेंट यूटिलाइज कर रहा है आउटसाइड इंडिया फॉर बिजनेस एंड प्रोफेशन इन दैट केस इंटरेस्ट रॉयल्टी एफ टैक्सेबल नहीं होगा रेसिडेंट यूटिलाइज कर रहा है आउटसाइड इंडिया नॉट फॉर बिजनेस एंड प्रोफेशन तो फॉर दिस नॉन रेसिडेंट इंटरेस्ट रॉयल्टी एफटीएस टैक्सेबल होगा ये था आपका पॉइंट नंबर टू अभी पॉइंट नंबर थ्री का बात करता हूं नॉन रेसिडेंट टू नॉन रेसिडेंट पेमेंट होगा नॉन रेसिडेंट टू नॉन रेसिडेंट में क्या हो रहा है इधर देर इज वन नॉन रेसिडेंट वन एंड यूर नॉन रेसिडेंट टू नॉन रेसिडेंट टू इज गिविंग लोन और नो हाउ और टेक्निकल सर्विस टू नॉन रेसिडेंट वन नाउ he will pay some amount to non resident too so it can be interest it can be know how or it can be technical fees for technical service okay know how na i can say royalty 
रॉयल्टी और फीस फॉर टेक्निकल सर्विस तो ये टैक्सेबल होगा कि नहीं ये किस पे डिपेंड करेगा दिस इज द इनकम ऑफ नॉन रेसिडेंट टू विल इट बी टैक्सेबल इन दैंड ऑफ नॉन रेसिडेंट टू इट विल बी डिपेंडेंट अपॉन द यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ लोन एंड नो हाउ एंड टेक्निकल सर्विस बाय नॉन रेसिडेंट वन If that non-resident one is utilizing such a inter, uh, loan know-how and technical service in India for business and profession, so Modi ji will say India ka sambandh aa gaya, so non-resident two ko India me tax bharna padega. But agar non-resident one, wo jo loan know-how technical service hai, India me to use kar raha hai, but not for business and profession. Not for business and profession. तो मोदी जी बोल रहे ठीक है तो बिजनेस करता रहेगा तो ही पैसा लूंगा पर तू बिजनेस नहीं कर रहा है ना देन इट इज नॉट टैक्स इन दर्ड केस नॉन रेसिडेंट टू अगर नॉन रेसिडेंट वन को कौन सा लोन दे रहा है नो हाउ दे रहा है टेक्निकल सर्विस दे रहा है एंड इफ द नॉन रेसिडेंट वन इज यूटिलाइजिंग दैट लोन नो हाउ टेक्निकल सर्विस आउटसाइड इंडिया तो इंडियन गवर्नमेंट को क्यों फर्क पड़ेगा then in that case whatever income that non resident 2 is earning will not be taxable in india utilized in india for business purpose hai to it will be taxable for nr2 if it is used in india for other purpose hai it is not taxable if it is used outside india hai then in that case it is not taxable and this is this was your point number 3 this was your point number 3 and this is the summary of your entire thing and there is one more thing that is dividend paid by indian company to its shareholders dividend paid by indian company to its shareholders will be taxable in the hands of shareholders earlier it was exempt under section 1034 but now it is fully and fully taxable in the hands of shareholders and this is how we have completed the revision of our entire chapter that is chapter number 2 residential status and scope of total income i hope you have understood each and everything which we discussed yes all the very best thank you